Now have you noticed that there's a unit of measure field that's sitting right here on the attribute definition? There's also a unit of measure field that you'll find in the data reference definition. UOM and UOM over here as well. And that can be kind of confusing. And add to that, there's a third place where you can change the UOM right here. Uh, but that's actually something we can pretty much ignore because that's only for kind of preview purposes. It doesn't really change anything. It just changes what you see on this one application. So let me explain the difference between unit of measure as shown here in the attribute definition and unit of measure as shown here in the point data uh, reference, that uh, PI data reference. Now this one is, uh, I guess, the, uh, the place to start. Uh, remember, this is where we define the data reference in the PI, PI system. So this is a reference to a PI tag. The unit of measure you use here, that unit of measure is going to be how you're treating the data that's coming from PI. Now you will notice that what you are able to select here is going to be limited by the class of attribute unit of measure that you create over here. Now if you look at the unit of measure that I've defined here, it is within a class called length. That's a base class. Okay, it's, and it's, uh, we're specifying kilometer here. Now if I were to change it to something else, like for example mass, and we'll go with kilogram, if that is what we're actually, actually measuring here, you will notice that now the only unit of measures you're going to be able to find here are things that are part of that base class. So that's the first point to make. So let me go ahead and change this back to length. With setting this at length in kilometer, that kind of sets the ground for how we define how we read this value coming in. Now what we use here is this is going to be how we're interpreting the data as it comes from the PI system. So if we say that this is a tag that's measured in meters, okay, all that tells us is that we're measuring it in meters. Now what we're specifying here is how we would like the default display to appear. And in this case I'm saying let's display this in kilometers. Now that's why we'll, we'll see if we, uh, if we go ahead and, um, yeah, let me go ahead and apply this. If we decide that we're going to look at this in kilometers, that's why you see we get this number that ends up being very small because we're reading a value that's measured in meters and we're displaying it in kilometers. And if you notice, when I went to change how I displayed this, the default has been set by whatever you chose over here. This essentially sets the default, although as you can see, you can change what you're looking at immediately, but it doesn't uh, save that change when you do it over here. So again, Going back into here, let's take a look at this tag, CDT158. If I do a tag search for it, here's the tag. Here is its current value. The current value is 100, whoops, the current value is 100.51. So that's the current value, but look at how we are displaying it. Okay. Let's go ahead and refresh our screen. Yeah, here's how it's actually being displayed in kilometers. So the, uh, we're interpreting it as though it's coming in in meters. And of course there's a thousand meters in a kilometer, so it ends up taking that raw data from pi and dividing it by a thousand. Now that's, um, that's the interaction between this, what you see right here, and what you see over here, how you decide the default display should be. But then there's always this right here, which is a right-click change display a unit of measure. What this is for is this is just kind of a preview to show you what it would look like with a different unit of measure. See, we tell you what the default is, but if you'd like to look at this in, say, centimeters, okay, now we're looking at that. What was 100 meters ends up being 10,000 centimeters. So you can see we're you know, the interaction between the three of these here. But don't let this last one confuse you. I mean, it's confusing enough that we've got two here, uh, but this, this is only for display purposes on this one uh, display right here on this Pi System Explorer. This will not be saved. And in fact, notice as you make changes, here, let me show you something. I'll go ahead and check in all my changes. When we make changes over here, 
if I were to change this and say, okay, uh, this is not being, I do not want the default to be kilometers, I want the default to be meters. If we make that change, okay, notice when you make that change, we're triggering over here that, that that's something that needs to be stored. It requires a check-in. That's because that was a change in the definition of this attribute. Well, watch what happens if I change this. If I decide to change this over to, um, let's go to meters here. Yeah, making that change doesn't change anything over here. It's not something that requires that you. Um, it's not something that requires that you save anything. And in fact, when um, when you make this change, it's only affecting how it's showing right now on this display here. Well, this is going to mop up on some features we haven't discussed before. Uh, one of the options when you're creating an attribute is whether you specify this to be a configuration item or not. Now, by a configuration item, what we mean is it's it's something that more or less defines that that element has now. You know, if if the item, or the value of this attribute changes, then we say that the element has a new version to it. So, in other words, uh, let's take a look at the lining here, for example. Uh, this mixing tank, it's only going to have one lining, and that lining is not going to change. It's not going to change from stainless steel to ceramic overnight, right? Probably in its entire lifetime it wouldn't. But if for some reason that is something that were changeable, it would be obviously some kind of a configuration item indicating that when that change occurs, we want to pull a new version of this element. See, this element actually has versions going back. Now, a revision simply means that, you know, if I, if I were to uh, just revise, excuse me, if I were to make a change to this value right here, and it's not a configuration item, that's just a revision. It's something that uh, we supersede re one revision after another. But the versions here in, are something that we will track historically. So if there's a configuration item here, or we specify that as a configuration item, that indicates that that's going to be uh, something that when changes happen to that value, that's going to create a new version for historical purposes of this element. Now, the other thing I'd like to go over is this categories. We haven't really looked at categories yet. We're going to look at that more in detail later on, but it is a way of categorizing all the different uh, objects, uh, elements, attributes. They can all be categorized. Now, if you recall, I said that the unit of measure is something that you can change from here. So watch what happens if I change that unit, unit of measure. Instead of Fahrenheit, let's go to Celsius. As you can see, that's, that's automatically picked that up. I'll give you an example of when you might want to do that. Uh, we've got this mixing tank here and a storage tank. And if they're physically next to each other, probably the outside air is going to be the same outside air temperature for both of them. So, you know, it's nice to have them together so you can see, or it's nice to have this outside air here on both the mixing and the storage tank. But since it's essentially looking at the same tag, uh, it's something that you would probably want to only be located in one place. I can do that by going into this storage tank and creating a new, I've created a new attribute here called outside air. But for this outside air, if you take a look at the uh, definition of this, the attribute is actually pointing to the outside air in that mixing tank. Now, how did we do that? Let me demonstrate by just deleting this. I'm going to delete that. We'll check this back in. So here we have mixing tank, we've got outside air, storage tank, no outside air. How do I do that? Well, I would go in first into mixing tank. One of the options on the right mouse click here is to copy the path. Now copying that path is going to be essentially copying the reference to that attribute. I do that because now when I add a new attribute here, and I'll call that attribute outside air also, And actually, we can call this, how about outside air storage tank? And we'll make that a pi point data reference. Now, as you see, it's a different attribute. But when I go in to settings, instead of pointing to that same tag name, instead of pointing to the same tag that I did before, that tag uh, uh, BA temperature, instead of pointing to that, I'm going to point to 
this that I've just copied, that path. That's the path to the mixing tank outside air. But why bother to do this? You see, it's uh, you, you might even argue it's not even it's not as easy as just going out and finding the same tag. But the beauty is now if I come back in here and we decide well outside air is now being defined elsewhere. Outside air is defined with a different pi tag. It's now being defined by the tag CDT158. I make this change in one place and all those other things that make reference to that will pick up that change. As you can see now this has picked up the change that's been made to this attribute right here because we're referencing it by attribute instead of by hard coding the tag name in there.